So I'm going to start with uh, Moore's circle and uh, do a, really the same problem that we did as we were finishing up last time. I'm going to start at a different point though. I'm actually going to just start at verbiage here. And from the verbiage, I'm going to go to the element. And then from the element, I'm going to go to Moore's circle. So let's see how this works. Uh, we talked a few weeks ago, and this is really not related to Moore's circle on how to come up with the element. If I draw the element, Of something like this. This would be the X face and this would be the Y face. We're told that sigma on the X face is 80 megapascals. We take uh, positive as tension. So I have then 80 megapascals. Then on the uh, Y face, I have a minus 50 megapascals. I could draw that in uh, tension and put a negative number on it, but uh, I don't like negative numbers, so I'm going to draw it in compression and get rid of the negative. So I draw this in compression and can call this then 50 megapascals. And lastly, the uh, shear stress, and this is on the x face in the y direction. So the x face in the y direction would be like that, right? Okay, but because it's a negative number, I think I'm going to do the same thing. I think I'm going to switch this so it'll be in the negative y direction. And I can write that this is a positive 30 megapascals. So I switched the end that the arrow is on and got rid of the negative sign. Then I know for this to be an equilibrium, the arrows have to point towards each other. So that would be the element. If you go back to your notes from the last lecture, that was a starting point for Moore's circle. So I went from the verbiage to the element, which really has nothing to do with Moore's circle. We talked about that a few weeks ago, quite a ways uh, before Moore's circle. And now I want to go then from the element to Moore's circle. So let me see if I can make that. Um, we're going to start with our axes. So we have the uh, shear axes, tau, in megapascals. And we have uh, the normal stress, sigma, also in megapascals. And this is where if you uh, do it like your author does, the, the uh, positive tau will point down and then you rotate different directions. So I caution you either follow your author's instructions completely and you get the same answer that I do or follow my instructions completely. You don't want to try and mix those. So if we look at the uh, X face, it looks like we have what? 80 megapascals. That's intention, so that's definitely going to be positive. So we'll come out here to a value of 80. And then if I look on the X face, if I just look at this shear here, it's going to tend to rotate the element clockwise, isn't it? What do we know about clockwise shear? It's plotted positive, isn't it? So I will have 30 here. So I have this point then on the X face that is really just a point on the plane, 80 and 30, if you like points. And that's one end of the diameter. And then if I look at the Y face, the Y face is plotted in compression. So compression, that would have to be a negative number. So now I'm over here at uh, minus 50. There's minus 50. And we know by default that uh, we have to be minus 30, but let's check that out. If I were to look at the Y face, where does this arrow tend to, to rotate it? Counterclockwise, right? It's going to rotate that element counterclockwise. So we know that we would be minus 30. So we have a point then. This would be the Y point, which is going to be minus 50 and minus 30. So with that, I can draw the diameter right there. And we know that this is the uh, center. And from the center, you grab a pencil compass. Anyone got a pencil compass? And one. I want to make sure it makes it a little easier to get the uh, the circle in here, but you'll draw this uh, circle like that. Okay, that's not a great circle, but it'll probably work for us. Okay, so the uh, what I want to do now is I want to find the location of the center, which would be uh, sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2, averaging those two values, which is 80 minus uh, 50, or plus or minus 50, if you will, divided by 2, which gives me 15 megapascals. Seems about right. And then looking at the, uh, the radius, if I look at, uh, let's say, 
this triangle here. I have a triangle that looks like this, where this is 80. This is the uh, center that we said was, what, 15? So I know that this side is 80 less 15, so this must be, what, 65? And then this side is uh, 30. So I can say then that the uh, radius is equal to the square root, just the Pythagorean theorem, of 65 squared plus 30 squared, which gives me 71.6 megapascals. I think that's what we found last time. While I'm here, maybe I'll talk about this angle in here. We could talk about that angle theta, and theta would be the arc tangent of the opposite side, which is 30, divided by the adjacent side, which is 65. What's that turn out to be? I believe that was uh, 24.8 degrees. And that's on the circle, right? So we have to be careful. We'll have to divide that by 2 when we go and look at the element. Questions so far on drawing more circle with that? Well, we know that our, our stresses here are going to be slightly larger. And this is where if I were a little more careful drawing the circle, I'd probably see this. I could say that this is sigma 2, which is going to be the center plus the radius. And I could say this point out here is going to be sigma 1 which is going to be the center minus the radius, right? And those will probably be just a little bit uh, smaller than minus 50 and larger than 80. Let's see where those come up. So if I look at my uh, principal stresses, So my principal stress is I have uh, sigma 1 that is equal to the center minus the radius. I have sigma 2 is equal to the center plus the uh, radius. Okay. I got the wrong principle there, don't I? So the uh, center minus the radius, we're going to have 15 minus uh, 71.6. Center plus the radius, we're going to have 15 plus 71.6. So we end up with 86.6 uh, and minus 56.6 megapascals. So if someone was asking you for the values here, like I said, they're a little past 80, 86 in fact, and they're a little smaller than minus 50, minus 56, we could come up with those points. Oftentimes they'll ask you to show those stresses on a properly oriented element. So our element starts out like this, horizontal and vertical. And how do I get the element to principal orientation? I'm going to have to rotate it this way. Some people say, well, well, could you rotate it this other way? Yeah, yeah, sure could, but we tend to always rotate the closest direction. So instead of taking x clear over here to sigma 1, it's going to be closer to take x just over here to sigma 2. So I'm going to rotate the element down. And how far am I rotating that thing down? Twenty-four point eight divided by two, which is what twelve point four. So I've rotated that clockwise twelve point four degrees. I have my new x and my new y then, and I know that in the x direction we've rotated this so x becomes sigma two, which is the center plus the radius. So I have eighty-six point six. We would be have a corresponding one over there. And then y is, doesn't y go to, y is going to go from there up to there. So y becomes minus 56.6. I'll go ahead and draw it in compression so I can get rid of the negative sign. And I have 56.6 megapascals. So those are the principal stresses. 
the maximum and minimum stresses on a properly oriented element. So if there was a, a piece of machinery or something and we pulled this element off of there like that and we wondered well what are our minimum and maximum stresses well they would occur on an element that was rotated something like that okay which might be interesting if we always keep getting cracks in this direction or cracks in that direction I want to start looking at that so those are the principal stresses on a properly oriented element what would be our maximum uh, shear? Maybe we'll talk about the uh, max shear orientation. So we're going to find the maximum shear and the orientation thereof. See if we can do that. What's that going to look like on the circle? Well, here I think I will rotate up this way. So I'm going to take my X and I'm going to put it up here. And the Y I'm going to take and I'm going to put down here. So my diameter is going to now look something like that. And that's where if I'd drawn this with a pencil compass, this would probably be a little better circle rather than an egg, but I think we can get it out of it. So our center is still at 15. So we're still going to have some normal stresses on this thing because if you look at this, this point here, this new X face is going to go to a point of 15. That's what the center is. And then the radius was 71.6, so I'll have 71.6. Whereas this point here is also going to be 15 and minus 71.6, right? So this is my new Y. This is my new X. So only if our center is at zero do we have no normal stresses at the maximum shear stress orientation. So let's see if we can uh, do that. How do we get there? If this is, let's see, this is going to be uh, 90 minus theta, isn't it? So let's work that out. 90 minus uh, theta is 90 minus, uh, what did we say theta was? 24.8 degrees. So that uh, gives me uh, 65.2 degrees. And then I'm going to divide that by 2, which would give me uh, what 32.6 degrees. So I now know that I have to, here I've rotated this counterclockwise. So I'm going to rotate the element counterclockwise. So my element will look something like this, and it's going to be up there 32.6 degrees. And on the X face and the Y face, I really just go to the circle. What's my X face? 15 in the normal, so I have positive 15. There's 15 megapascals. Because that's the rules when we go from uh, more circle to the element. That's that's the one freaky rule. Okay, you get to give up all the ugly equations and trying to remember those things. And is that plus or minus? Uh, you get to give all that up and just play with geometry. But the one weird thing you have to do is always divide the angle by two. Other questions? Okay, so we got 15 megapascals. What's our shear stress? Our shear stress is positive, right? So a positive shear stress is going to tend to rotate the element which way? Do I put the arrow down here or do I put the arrow up there? Well, if the shear stress is positive, it's got to move it, rotate it clockwise, so I better put the arrow down there, right? Then everything else is going to follow suit, and we can double check when we get over to Y. This would be 71.6 megapascals for the shear. Now let's see, when we get to Y, what do we have? We still have positive 15. So there is 15 megapascals, positive 15. So it's kind of interesting. The y direction has always been in compression, except when we get to this uh, area here, all of a sudden it's in tension. If we have something that doesn't take tension very well, this could be a problem. 
Well, what else on, is going on in the Y? We have the minus shear stress. Do we have minus shear stress there? If you look at just that, which way is that going to rotate it? Counterclockwise. It worked out, didn't it? Okay, so that's our orientation, our maximum shear stress orientation. Our maximum shear stress, 71.6, and the normal stresses that accompany that. They're not maximum, but it's interesting that the y direction turned around on us. It's now in tension and not compression. So there's all, th all kinds of things that you can do with this. Um, I think one of your homework problems will, will ask, uh, well, what happens if you put a, a line like this? So you rotate the line over here, and you start asking, well, what if you have x and y there? It's just a matter of finding out geometry, isn't it? So you've got some homework problems. You're probably deferring those till after the, uh, the midterm. That's probably a fine thing, but uh, make sure that you start working on those because this is much like riding a bike. You can sit and watch this all you want, but until you uh, start to, to mess with it, you really probably don't have full understanding. And you have to get scuffed up a little bit. So, Questions with that? So in that 32 is 26. Our theta in our circle was that 12.4. In our circle, our theta was 24.8. Okay. Yeah, so let's. Uh, so if I, uh, if I take my angles here on the, uh, on the circle. I get myself a little room here. So if I talk about the uh, circle, I'm going to take the uh, 24.8 and I'm going to add it to the uh, 65.2. And what do I get? 90 degrees. And on the element, I'm going to take 12.4 uh, and I'm going to add it to 32.6 and what do I get? 45 degrees. And of course there's a 2 to 1 ratio there. And didn't we say that the difference between the principal orientation and the maximum shear stress orientation was 45 degrees? We did. No, that was yesterday's lecture. That was yesterday's lecture where we talked about this. The difference between these two, the principal orientation and the maximum shear stress orientation, is they differ by 45 degrees on the element. They differ by 90 degrees on Moore's circle. It should be obvious on Moore's circle. When we have principal, we're down here, right? Isn't this principal? And then this one here is maximum shear stress. What's the angle in there? 90 degrees, right? What's half a 90? 45. Yes? Um, so how did you know that the principal tau, the max shear, was going to be positive and therefore goes to the clockwise? The, uh, oh, okay, we, we started out with this diameter here. Wasn't that the given one? And I know to get principal I have to be horizontal. So I opted to rotate the closest direction. Okay. Now, could I have rotated this clear around and made this point come to over there? I actually could, which would be the same as just switching my x and y axes there. You'd get the same answer. Okay. okay. So my actual, uh, I think what I was trying to get at was this angle theta. In our picture, we have, we have our element going, we're rotating clockwise. But this one going clockwise. Okay, I know. Th I think we're okay here. I mean, this is the given, right? right? And how do I get to principle if I'm if I'm like this? How do I get to principle? Rotate clockwise, right? So if I start it out like like this and I rotate clockwise. We'll be down like that, right? Okay. Now, if I started out here and I want to go vertical, I got to rotate which way? Yeah. Counterclockwise. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, counterclockwise. We're good. Yeah. 
Okay, like I said, this just takes some doing. I, I'd say probably the two toughest subjects in here are sure and moment diagrams and more circle. They're worth figuring out. Yes? Why, when you rotate it to the shear max? The max shear? Clockwise, the point at the bottom in the fourth quadrant is negative. Right here? Yes, that point. Why is there a negative outside? Oh, this one? Yeah. I think that's a dot. That was this line that got out of control here. Oh, okay. So the 15, that's why it's positive. Yeah. Pay no attention to that. <laughs> Other questions? In years to come, archaeologists will unveil my PDFs and wonder what in the world are we talking about. But uh, suffice it to say, that's not a negative sign. Yes? So, um, kind of in real life, what that means is we're looking at stresses in different orientations. Okay, so we started out, like I say, let's say that we have the side of a, um, a, a gusset on a machine or something like that, and we're looking at it like this. And maybe it's always cracking like this, or someone wants to make a weld repair at this angle. We really should probably turn and look at it in that orientation. Okay, uh, you have a, a, a great homework problem where they uh, and we're gonna after we get done with more circle we're gonna talk about uh, tanks, but they talk about making a pressure vessel like this and using a uh, a helix to do it. Okay, like you make a paper towel tube or something like this. If we're gonna design the weld on that helix, we probably want to look at an element like that. We don't necessarily want to look at an element like that, right? So that's in practice what we'd be looking at. Other questions? Well, let's go on to another problem then. So, a, um, I'll start out with an element here. And more circle is worth putting the effort into because we're going to talk about pressure vessels and then we'll talk about Hooke's Law and that will take us to more circle of strain. So if you can do more circle of stress, more circle of strain is going to be a lot easier. Uh, next year, the, the geotechnical folks will use more circle a lot. The uh, mechanicals will use more circle a lot in terms of failure analysis. So it's going to be something you're going to see over and over again. This is not something where you just say, well, I'm going to take my lumps on a test question and go on. I don't think that that's probably a good good plan. Um, and it's probably a little bit like the shear and moment diagram. Some of you finally figured out the shear and moment diagram. And I bet you remember exactly where you were sitting and when it was that you finally figured that out. The light literally came on. Okay? Uh, more circles a little like that. So let's say that someone gives you an element that looks like that KSI. Remember, one KSI is equal to a thousand PSI. So we got an element like that it's in the English system. We'd like to draw more circle for this thing. So what's more circle going to look like? So here's sigma KSI. Here's tau. Again, I do this opposite of your author. Your author will be putting tau down. Okay, on the X face, it looks like I have, what, 10 in compression. So that's going to give me a minus 10 over here. And what is this shear force? On the uh, X face, if I look at uh, this shear up there, it's going to tend to rotate it which way? Counterclockwise, isn't it? So I plot counterclockwise how? Whoops, I am I got I took the wrong shear, didn't I? Yeah, the X face. There we go. Which way is that one going? 
clockwise. So I'll be up here at 4. So I have this point now on the x face that is minus 10 and 4. Okay, so let me try then the uh, y face. The y face, it looks like I have 8. So I'll say that I have 8 here. That's in tension. And then if I look at the shear stress, and now I'm doing this right, on the uh, y face, it's going counterclockwise, which is a good thing, because if this was positive, then this would have to be negative, so minus 4. And I'm right there. So there is the y face. And all we're doing is plotting points on this plane. There's the y face at uh, 8 and minus 4. So with two points, we have a line. It happens to be our diameter, like that. We come up with the uh, center. We'll talk more about what that number is, but graphically we got the center right there. You can set up your pencil compass and something like that. Okay. So you have the uh, center, which is going to be equal to what? Uh, 8 plus or minus 10. Divided by 2 gives me minus 1 or minus 1 KSI. I'm going to choose to look at this triangle here because this triangle goes over the uh, origin, so it's a little confusing in terms of plus and minus numbers, so I think I'll look at this triangle right here. Looking at that triangle right there, I can say that I have a point here, minus 1. I have a point out here, minus 10. So what's that give me for the distance of that side? 9, right? And the distance of this side is 4. This is a right angle, so the radius then is equal to the square root of 9 squared plus 4 squared, which gives me what? Uh, that's, not a that's not a nice tidy one, isn't it? 9.85 KSI something like that. So I can say then if I want my principal stresses I would take this y and I would go to the closest direction that would be sigma 2 right there and I take the x and I would go to right there we'll call that sigma 1. So sigma 1 is going to be equal to the center minus the radius which is what minus 1 minus a 9.85 which gives me uh, minus 10.85 KSI. The uh, sigma 2 is going to be equal to the center plus the radius, which gives me a center of minus 1 plus 9.85, which gives me a positive 8.85 KSI. Do those seem like reasonable values? That's why probably if you do this to a, a somewhat of a reasonable scale, I, I mean, I wouldn't, you know, uh, carry around special graph paper or something, but just try and make this uh, reasonable. We, we recognize this point should be outside, should be greater than 8, shouldn't it? We recognize this point here should be less than minus 10, and it, it seems reasonable. So now if I want to draw this on a properly oriented element, what am I going to have to do? This is where I'm starting out, right? That's the given. And so I'm going to have to rotate up to this horizontal axis. I'm trying to rotate like that. So I know my element is going to look like that. So I need to figure out how much I have to rotate this thing. Well, this angle here is, of course, the same as that angle there. So I'll come over here and talk about this theta. Theta being equal to the arc tangent of the opposite side 4 divided by the adjacent side 9. We come up with uh, theta being equal to, what, 24 degrees? Anyone check me on that? Yeah, 23.96. We'll call it 24. Okay, so this is on the circle, right? So we know over here that we have to take 24 and divide it by 2, so we'll have 12 degrees. So we've rotated this up here, 24 on the circle. We've rotated this up 12 on the element. Then I can go ahead, and when we've made that rotation, the x is now sitting here at sigma 1, isn't it? 
So x is going to be minus 10.85. I don't like the negative sign, so I'll just draw it in compression. Call it 10.85 KSI. Where is uh, sigma 2? That's going to be on the y. The y has gone up to there. So I have positive 8.85. So there's 8.85 KSI. Now, is there any shear? No, by definition, with this principal orientation, we're down here on this horizontal. The shear is equal to zero, isn't it? Okay. Now, if I wanted to, I'm not going to spend the time necessarily to uh, go there. But if I wanted to rotate this to a maximum shear orientation, that would look like that, wouldn't it? And what would be the maximum value of the shear? I mean, if, as a little aside here, tau maximum is going to be equal to the radius, isn't it? Yeah. And you could find that. You could find that angle to rotate if you if you wanted to. I'm not going to uh, to belabor that. Questions with that? Well, I want to try one more problem, and I don't think I'll get through it today, but it'll be a good introduction. It'll be the last problem that we do on this, and it's a little bit different. So I'm going to start out with uh, something that looks like this. So I'm going to take this into three dimensions. And I'm going to say that this is the uh, z direction. I'm going to say that this is the y direction. I'm going to say this is the x direction. And I'm going to say that this is uh, 12 KSI. I'm going to say that this is 12 KSI. So 12 KSI tension in the y direction, 12 KSI compression in the x direction. Then I'm going to put the uh, shear stresses on here. They'll look like this. And we'll say that those are 5 KSI. And then in the z direction, I'm going to put that it is 15 KSI. And I can actually do 3D. I can do a 3D problem if sigma sub z, sigma z, is zero. Well, that's obvious, right? These sigma sub z is zero. Okay. Or if sigma z is principal. How do I know that sigma z is principal in this case? Well, the definition of principal, we don't have any shear stress. Do I have any shear stress on the z face? I don't, do I? Okay. So I have no shear stress on the Z face, so this has to be principal. So I could actually, if I wanted to, write this like this. Maybe something that we've seen a little more readily. Go back into a more 2D kind of arrangement, this being the X face and this being the Y face. I didn't draw the other stresses down here, but they're there. It obviously has to be in equilibrium. Y had uh, 12 KSI in tension. X had 12 KSI in compression. And then, uh, what was our shear? It was like this, wasn't it? And these other ones existed. I just didn't show them there. So nothing new there. But we should probably note, and sigma z is equal to 15 KSI. And that's principle. Okay. I mean, we could take it from this. There'd be nothing wrong with doing that. But uh, since this is our first uh, problem with a 3D problem, I decided to change it into something that was maybe a little easier to, to look at. So what are we going to have with this thing? Well, I'm going to draw my circles just like I've always done. Sigma KSI. Then we've got uh, tau in uh, KSI and what do we have here X is in compression so I have minus 12 
and the uh, stress tends to the shear stress on the X face going to rotate that counterclockwise, isn't it? So I'm going to be down here at minus five. So I got an X point that is there at minus twelve, minus five. And then what about Y? I have positive 12, so there is a 12. And on the uh, Y face, I look at that, that's going to rotate it clockwise, so I must be up here at positive 5. So there's the uh, Y, which is 12, positive 5. Absolutely nothing new with that. We can draw, in fact, we can draw a circle with that. Should look something like that. Right. Okay. I mean, we could even come up with a, the center on that. Where is the uh, center on that? 12 plus a minus 12 over 2 gives me 0, doesn't it? We can come up with the radius. But what about this thing? Minus 15. Well, let me put it out here. There's minus 15. How did I know to put it there? Well, it's principal, so it has to be on an orientation that has no shear stress, so I know it has to be on the horizontal axis, don't I? And the really interesting thing about that is I can actually now draw another circle. I have this other circle that looks like this. Kind of a circle. And then I have a circle here that looks like that. And that's actually my three planes. This circle here is going to be the XY plane. This circle here, let's see, if I take this as X, this will be the XZ plane. And this circle here is going to be what? This is my Y point. This will be YZ. Okay. So you actually have three circles. And you might have said, well, what if sigma z was zero? You came back here and said sigma z was zero. Well, it sure was. You actually had three circles going here, but they were inside. We were dealing with the largest circle. Here, our xy is not necessarily the largest circle, so that's going to be kind of uh, interesting for us. So I guess I could come up with this point here, right? If I find the radius on this thing, if I draw this triangle here, and I look at that, I'm going from 0 to 12, which gives me 12 on this side. I've got 5 here, so I've got uh, the square root of 12 squared plus 5 squared gives me, what, 13? So I know my radius is equal to 13. That's this radius. So if I take the uh, center and I minus the uh, radius, which is going to be 0 minus 13, that gives me minus 13, doesn't it? So this point here, while this one is minus 12, this point here is minus 13. So I now know that this circle has a diameter of, this small circle has a diameter of 2 and a radius of 1, right? Okay. And we're going to talk about principal orientations for this. We're also going to talk about absolute maximum shear stress. And whenever you see someone talk about absolute maximum shear stress, you want to find the radius of the largest circle. The answer here is not going to be the radius 13. It's going to be the radius of the largest circle. So if this goes from minus 15 to what would this point be out here now? 13. So it's from minus 15 to 13. So what would our absolute maximum be? We got a spread of 28 across there. So that wouldn't that be 14? Yeah. So you want to think the largest radius. Well, I suspect some of you are probably uh, preoccupied with the uh, the midterm coming up, and that's fine. So when we get together uh, next time, after the uh, the midterm. 
we'll tackle this problem again from uh, scratch. Maybe I can draw a little better circle instead of two circles and an egg. And um, we'll talk about what the principal orientation looks like and explore this a little more. But for now, remember, when someone asks you for the absolute maximum shear stress, it's the radius of the largest circle. When I went back to here, by default, when I was talking about maximum shear stress, I was already finding the radius of the largest circle. But in this case, I actually had to go to do a little more work to find the radius of the largest circle. I'll leave it like that. Uh-huh.